Well, on behalf of Kunsthal Trondheim, State of Concept, Swiss Institute, Tropical Papers, and Art of Copenhagen, I'm very happy to welcome you all to the Digital Divide the Symposium on Attention Algorithms and Social Justice. I'm Lars Bang Larsen, I'm Head of Research at Art Hub. To briefly give you some context for our symposium, I can say that it's uh, part of the exhibition project Attention After Technology that will conclude in a group show to open at Kunsthal Trondheim in October this year and will open at State of Concept in uh, the spring, in March 2024. Beginning this autumn, the project will also have an online manifestation on the website of Tropical Papers. Attention After Technology is funded by the European Union and has as its associated partners Princeton University and Université de Paris. The critical and creative focus of attention after technology is closely connected to the attention economy in which our individualized time, perception, and personal worlds have become some of the most valued goods through network digital communication technologies. Our symposium too addresses accelerating development in AI and more or less hidden hegemonies in the algorithmic organization of attention and human life. And so, a few months ago, we played around at Artop with ChatGPT to assist us with finding a title for the symposium, which is a move that already seems old and tired. This feeling of datedness, however, might not only be because it was a half-baked idea to consult ChatGPT in this respect, or because the development of AI is moving so fast. It could also be because we're facing some familiar narratives and entrenched patterns of thinking. So to go a bit back in, to go a little bit back in history, in 1964, Norbert Wiener published his extravagantly titled book *God and Gollum Incorporated*, a comment on certain points where cybernetics impinges on religion. Here, Wiener compares the computing machine to a golem, and as you'll know, in Jewish mysticism, the golem is a kind of animated automaton who ends up making a mess. It's a, it's a servant to human that ends up creating chaos. In the conclusion to his book, Wiener states that the burden of ethics must be brought to the arena of politics, away from God, that is, and away from religion and magic and other kinds of stated unknowing that are supposedly out of human hands. There is an echo of uh, Wiener's ruminations in how Elon Musk recently warned that Google co-founder Larry Page wants to build, quote, a digital superintelligence, basically a digital god, unquote which is a bad idea, according to Musk. Larry Page isn't taking AI safety seriously enough, Musk says. Which Larry Page probably isn't, but as already not what Wiener discussed, to evoke a thinking machine as a transcendent entity is not the best way to address the issue. For one thing, because the notion of a digital god reaffirms a human machine binary that this simulates the role played by social norms in human decision making in building and operating AIs. It's also a point of view that tends to obfuscate discussions of who gets to be human in a digitalized world. To put it plainly, we must take the gods down to earth, whether they are digital deities or the seemingly inevitable patriarchs, old and new. This to bring, this to bring questions of ethics and justice into our public reach and public spheres where we want to find out what human coexistence is when it's mediated by machines. At the same time, we can't simply insert a human into the loop to secure ethical decisions. The human is in the algorithm, just like the algorithm is in the human. This speaks directly to the notion of the digital divide. Um, as far as I know, the term usually describes technological gaps in society, for instance, in terms of lack of access to technology or infrastructure that can lead to discrepancies in people's learning or health or access to work. Accordingly, accordingly analysis of digital divides are dominated by operational concepts of inclusion and skills and literacy and ownership. But if we really are to talk about digital divides, it seems necessary to add some variables and expand the, no and expand the notion. In this way, one of today's speakers, Ramon Amaro, urges us to consider what he calls, quote, the algorithm's reliance on historical category 
namely what features represent the categories of human, gender, race, sexuality, and so on, unquote. And as our keynote speaker, Sapphire Noble, has pointed out, discrimination is embedded in computer code and in AI. Algorithmic oppression, as she puts it, along lines of race and gender, quote, is not just a glitch in the system, but rather is fundamental to the operating system of the web, unquote. So seen in this way, the question of digital divides is constituted differently than something to be compensated for with some redistribution and statistical improvement. It's fundamentally also about domination and exclusion, about ostensibly rational and value-neutral technological systems that perpetuate or even aggravate prejudice and bias, and that stigmatize people or render them undetectable. It's about the divide between people, uh, between people, between people the machine allows to exist, and people whose existence it disallows. So, how do we break the mold of entrenched and oppressive narratives of AI? How do we rethink and reconfigure the iterative production and reproduction of existing social relations that algorithms perform? How can, we, how can we be attentive differently? How can we develop our capacity to imagine a future and speak and act towards it? And how can artists and artistic thinking contribute to this? These are some of the big issues that our wonderful lineup of speakers will uh, be dealing with today. Uh, they come from research and art making and engineering or all of the above at the same time. And they engage with uh, digitalized life in different ways and from the points of view of different subjectivities and different places in the world. So uh, what's in store for us today is um, lectures and panels, as well as uh, two unique artistic events uh, and plenty of back and forth with the audience, I hope. Which is also to say that um, our symposium is an online event too, uh, so we can interact with people in cyberspace during questions, and also Sophia Noble's lecture is online live from California. Before we go to our first session, I want to uh, thank our symposium partners in Copenhagen, that's Toaster, the experimental platform for theater performance and visual arts. Uh, and it's the Danish Society of Engineers in whose uh, swanky lecture hall we find ourselves. Uh, and as always, the Society of Engineers is super capably represented by Tina Rion. Um, I want to thank the team at ArtHub too, especially Rose Titgat, who wrote, I think, 10,000 emails to make this symposium happen, uh, thus embodying an organizational singularity, all of her own. And uh, thanks too to our crew of technicians who are connecting virtual and real space today. Um, we are on a tight program, so I'll dive into it uh, and introduce the first session titled Escaping Algorithms. Um, and this session addresses how algorithmic agency impinges on collective existence, uh, asking whose eyes and artificial minds are where and why. How do algorithms exercise control in everyday life and in relation to civic issues? Conversely, how can such technological tools be conceived or appropriated as means of protection and thus become allies of the right to invisibility? So that's a bit of the framing for the first session. I'm very pleased to welcome as our first speakers, Annalena Schiller, who is uh, Head of Technology at Algorithm Watch, a nonprofit research and advocacy organization based in Berlin. Uh, Algorithm Watch is committed to watch and analyze automated decision-making, uh, sorry, automated decision-making systems and their impact on society, democracy, and law. At Algorithm Watch, Annalena works with organizational development and focuses on implementing software that investigates the effects of automate, aut automated sorry, decision making. Before joining Algorithm Watch, uh, Annalena ran a design consultancy and created data visualization projects. And she's educated from uh, Chaos Piloterne in Aarhus. The other speaker in our first session is um, Gro Sarau, Copenhagen-based artist, uh, who very excitingly will be uh, the head of Art Hub's newly started research program called the Micro Institute. And this is in collaboration um, with her partner, the Mexican artist Ana Garza Lau. 
Um, their fascinating project, Ghost Agency, is the topic of Gros talk today that's titled Women's Rights in the Age of Surveillance Capitalism. And I'm no less excited to introduce the moderator of the first session, it's Lotte Løholm, who is a curator and researcher, who, among many other things, is the initiator and anchor of Collega, a curatorial project here in Copenhagen, with an emphasis on collective process and uh, co-curation in exhibition making. Um, yeah, together with uh, Anne Kølbæk Iversen, Lotte is the author of the, recent, of, the, of the recent book Algorithm, out on Antipyrene Press. press sorry. That's on the theme of algorithmic performativity in visual art. Yeah. 